Welcome to evening prayer from St Edmundsbury Deanery. Just me and you, those joining us online. If you have a computer or laptop or smartphone with you, you can easily download the free Church of England worship app, which gives you daily prayer. If you just look for daily prayer Church of England, there's a free app you can download and you can join us there. We'll have a moment of quiet before we start and then after the intercessions um, a short piece of piano music just to reflect to. It's really important in these times that we maintain rhythms of prayer and that we dig deep and allow God to speak to us in the silence. Friends we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. In the darkness of our sin, you have shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence, that freed from the misery of sin and shame, we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 94. If you're following at home, you say the even verses. I will join in for those who don't have the app. Righteousness are yours, O Lord and true are your judgments. Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. O God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine out in majesty. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Give the arrogant their just deserts. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall the evildoers boast? and pour out such impudent words. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They murder the widow and the stranger, the orphans they put to death, and yet they say the Lord will not see. Neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Consider most stupid of people, you fools, when will you understand? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He who corrects the nations, shall he not punish? He who teaches the peoples, does he lack knowledge? The Lord knows every human thought, that they are but a breath. Blessed are those whom you chasten, O Lord, whom you instruct from your law, that you may give them rest in days of adversity until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not fail his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. For justice shall return to the righteous and all that are true of heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take my part against the evildoers? If the Lord had not helped me, my soul would soon have been put to silence. And when I said my foot has slipped, your loving mercy, O Lord, upheld me. 
in the multitude of cares that troubled my heart. Your comforts have refreshed my soul. Will you have anything to do with the throne of wickedness, which fashions evil through its law? They gather together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold and the God, the rock of my trust. He will turn against them their own wickedness and silence them through their own malice. The Lord our God will put them to silence. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Righteous are you, O Lord, and true are your judgments. Lord God, judge of all, before whom no secrets are hidden. Let your justice shine out and your righteousness sweep wickedness from its throne, that we may live free from fear and stumbling through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the prophecy of Jeremiah, chapter 19, verses 1 to 13. Thus says the Lord, Go and buy a potter's earthenware jug. Take with you some of the elders of the people and some of the senior priests, and go out to the valley of the son of Hinnom at the entry to the potsherd gate, and proclaim there the words that I tell you. You shall say, Hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. I am going to bring such disaster upon this place that the ears of everyone who hear of it will tingle. Because the people have forsaken me and have profaned this place by making offerings in it to other gods whom neither they nor their ancestors nor the kings of Judah have known. And because they have filled this place with the blood of the innocent and gone on building the high places of Baal to burn their children in the fire as burnt offerings to Baal which I did not command or decree, nor did it enter my mind. Therefore the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when this place shall no more be called Topeth, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. And in this place I will make void the plans of Judah and Jerusalem, and will make them fall by the sword before their enemies, and by the hand of those who seek their life. I will give to their dead bodies for food to the birds of the air, and to the wild animals of the earth, and I will make this city a horror, a thing to be hissed at. Everyone who passes by it will be horrified and will hiss because of all its disasters. And I will make them eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and all shall eat the flesh of their neighbours in the siege and in the distress with which their enemies and those who seek their life afflict them. Then you shall break the judge in the sight of those who go with you, and shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, So will I break this people and this city, as one breaks a potter's vessel, so that it can never be mended. In Topheth they shall bury until there is no more room to bury. Thus will I do to this place, says the Lord, and to its inhabitants, making this city like Topheth. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled like the place of Topheth or the houses upon whose roofs offerings have been made to the whole host of heaven, and libation have been poured out to other gods. Here ends the Old Testament reading. Song of Christ the Servant. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted himself to God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned 
to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. The New Testament reading from the Gospel according to St John, the 10th chapter, the 22nd verse to the end of the chapter. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered round him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the father's hand. The father and I are one. The Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, though only a human being, are making yourself God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If those to whom the word of God came were called gods, and scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world is blaspheming because I said I am God's son? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried to arrest him again, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Georgian, Jordan to the place where John had been baptising earlier, and he remained there. Many came to him and they were saying, John performed no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true. And many believed in him there. Here ends the New Testament reading. A couple of moments of quiet just to reflect on the readings. The Responsory Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. The Magnificat, the Song of Mary. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things 
and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. So let us pray. The savagery of the vision in the prophecy of Jeremiah came true in the destruction of Judah and Jerusalem, has come true in so many scenes of war and devastation throughout the world. So perhaps we should begin our prayers with a longing for peace in our war-torn world. To echo the call for a universal ceasefire issued by the United Nations. To long for an end to all violence and war. A prayer for hope that this time of coronavirus may cause people to lay down their weapons, an end to persecution, hatred and cruelty, as we meet this coronavirus killer together. Lord, as so much of our focus on the war-torn parts of the world has been taken away during the coronavirus, we continue to long for the peace of the Middle East, peace in Syria, in the Yemen, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. Lord, your will is peace for your people. We long for peace in our troubled and broken world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus speaks of the Father's love for the sheep, that the great shepherd will never allow the sheep to be torn out of his hand. So let us offer ourselves as the sheep of God's pasture in love and hope. So we pray for those isolated at home, pray for those worried about family and friends from whom they're separated. Pray for those in hospital and pray for our National Health Service and the half a million who volunteered for the National Help Service in thanksgiving for so many signs of care and bravery and commitment and love. Lord, your will for your people is wholeness and flourishing. We give thanks for all those whose activities fill us with admiration. And we pray forgiveness for the anger in our hearts against those who behave selfishly. Help us through this current crisis to grow in faith and hope and love, to grow in generosity and in compassion, so that when it's over, our hearts, our souls and our minds may have grown in love for you, for one another, and for our deepest selves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the church continuing to work under challenging circumstances, for our online presence, for all those who join us at home. Pray for the ministry of all Christian leaders for our Archbishop Justin, our Bishops Martin and Mike, for the continuing ministry of our Cathedral Church. Pray for those leading many funerals at this time and pray for chaplains in hospitals and hospices and prisons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
and we offer the deepest thoughts and fears and anxieties of our own hearts. Speak your peace deep within us, Lord. Help us both to acknowledge what we feel and also to be courageous and live wisely and with love for all. Merciful Lord, absolve your people from their offences that through your bountiful goodness we may be delivered from the chains of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this heavenly Father for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. For thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God our Redeemer show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. So hopefully um, feeling a peace, peace and quiet in your hearts. Just some music uh, for you. I'm going to focus uh, the screen on this beautiful icon that I use for my prayers every day uh, while you hear this short piece of piano music by Peter Maxwell Davis, Farewell to Stromness. It'll be very familiar to you. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer. Celia says that she would have been at in Orkney this weekend if it wasn't for the virus. So um, farewell to Stromness has reminded her of that. Thank you, Celia. So make some noise tonight for the NHS at eight o'clock to show those who are doing a fantastic job that we are grateful to them. Go out of your front door, go out on your balcony, go out of your window, make some noise, use tambourines, saucepan lids, whatever, to say thank you to our fantastic carers. Um, let us know at the cathedral if there's anything we can do, if there's anyone you want us to pray for, anyone who needs a phone call, anyone who needs some shopping doing. Um, the shelves are stacked. Uh, I was doing some shopping for some older parishioners today and there was plenty, plenty to go around. So let us know if you need us to do shopping for parishioners, if you want us to pray for someone by name, uh, and if you want us to give you a ring. Uh, lots of love and stay connected.